You up with your girls, Misa and Mia from You Already Know. It's Eminem Live Radio, and it's the moment you all have been waiting for. That's right, Misa. Through revealing lyrics and organics beats, this artist is without a doubt the next generation of rappers pushing limits in hip-hop, being a two-time Hawaiian Grammy winner yes. and an outspoken advocate for social issues within Hawaii. He is breaking boundaries in music and culture all at the same time. His new album, Doubting Thomas, is out right now. And listen, we're going to talk to the mind behind the music right here, right now. We want to welcome Street Light Sounds yes. artist Thomas Iannucci to the show. Thomas, how are you, my friend? <laughs> Yo, aloha, ladies. I'm good. How are you guys doing today? Listen, aloha right back to you, bro. Listen, welcome <laughs> to the show. We're so happy to have you. Thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with us here on Eminem Live Radio. My pleasure. I'm so honored to be here. I'm a fan. I've been a fan for a minute, so happy to finally do this. Thank you, yo. We're happy to have you. And likewise, back to you. Now, before we talk about Thank the album, you. we want to first say congratulations <laughs> on becoming a part of the Streetlight Sound Collective. Ooh, now, yes. just tell us, you know, what is it about Streetlight mm. Sound that made you want to join their team? Sure. So, I mean, obviously, my friendship goes back with Crumb for a while, you know, and that was a big thing for me was that you know, I've had offers in the past, you know, um, but really this kind of thing is about trust. Mm -hmm. And so I know Crum, you know, he's a brother to me, like outside of music, that guy's my brother. So, you know, I know that if anything was to get, you know, weird, we could walk away from this and still be brothers, you know? So that was very important, the trust aspect. Plus we've worked together a lot. He did my uh, last album, Kuleana, which we won the Hawaiian Grammy for, which, you know, so there's a, a history there. We've collaborated a bunch before and since. Um, so it was very organic, you know, um, and plus knowing who else is going to be involved, like Mele and Seni and Kayla and stuff is all people I really admire. So it was honestly, it was a no brainer. It was the most logical thing. Oh, man, that is so dope. I, I love when artists are able to build true relationships with people that they actually yeah. work with. But I, I, I am curious yeah. about this. So with the Hawaiian Grammy, are they the same as, you know, the, the regular Grammys? Are they still shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same? Or is it uh, different so they look different. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but that's a good idea, though. <laughs> that's a good idea. No, um, so I'm going to send you guys a picture after this. Yeah. Um, and I think if anybody wants to go check it out, it's on my social media. Okay. Um, but it's the same parent company, right? So the National Academy of Courting Arts does the Grammys. And since Hawaii is, it used to be its own country, right? It's got a whole, you know, culture of music and everything. So it was just easier to have our own version of that. Mm -hmm. So the Hawaii Academy of Recording Arts, Hara, they set it up. So it's called the Nahoku Hano Hano Award. Nahoku Hano Hano is like, a, I think it's Arcturus. It's the North Star. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what the Polynesians used to, you know, that was their guiding light when they would go from island to island, you know. Yeah. Um, and so, so ours is like a, it's like a wooden base. And then it's like a, a clear kind of like a vinyl record with like the North star, the, the Hawaiian North star in the middle. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. That Listen, that's so dope. Well, congratulations, yo. Two time Thank winning. You. Like, you know, I've Thank never you. heard of, of anything like that. And the fact that you're able to be able to have that award in your belt is glad. so amazing. And honestly, we're so honored to even have you on the show, man. Listen, well, this new album is finally here. Yeah. And we're so happy yes. to finally celebrate it. I feel like it's so necessary to celebrate this album because you started Thank this you. fundraiser to promote the album and you successfully reached your goal and even had mm. a chance to even raise money even beyond the yeah. initial amount that you had. How did it feel knowing that you had so many genuine people ready to set uh support your album before it came out? Yeah. Bro, honestly, it's crazy. Like I never even um sorry, the pigeon is coming out a little bit. I, I didn't <laughs> even <laughs> I didn't even expect it. Um, you know, it's very it's not uh Hawaiian or, or Asian or local style culture to do that kind of thing, um, to to ask for support and that kind of stuff and put yourself out there in that way. Um, it was not something that I was super confident in, but um, my collaborator from this new album, Doubting Thomas, uh, really was like strongly recommending because, you know, we couldn't tour, we can't, you know, sell merchandise, all that kind of stuff, the ways you normally would generate income off of that to promote it further. We just didn't have the option. So um, the fact that we had that kind of outpouring support when I was really unsure, I never did anything like that before in my life. And honestly, you know, we hit, Right, we hit the um, we hit the goal in the first week. Wow. We the first thirty five hundred dollars we hit in one week. It was crazy. It was 
all Jesus, um, my my fans, you know, friends, family, everyone who was so generous to support us is like a huge blessing. It was it was beyond overwhelming. I was very humbled. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. And, and we're we're so happy that you were able to hit that mark. Cause yeah. honestly, like Thomas, when, when we when we talk to you, when we hear, hear your music, we can hear the true authenticity of who you are as a Thank person. You. And I feel like everyone that was able to give and donate and sow into your cause could also feel that exact mm-hmm. same thing when it comes to you know finding out what cause they should give to and what, which one they should not Thank give you. to. So huge congratulations to you and your team on that. Now let's dive Why deep into this album. Yes. Okay? It's called let's do it. It's called Doubting Thomas. Tell us yes, why ma'am. that title for the project. Sure. So I mean Obviously, there's the obvious play on words, right? My name is Thomas, yeah. reference to Thomas, the daughter, the disciple, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and as a rapper, I was like a good word play, you know? But uh, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> a little bit on a deeper note, um, the last few years, even before uh, COVID, which is just like the icing on the cake, mm-hmm. you know, the last couple of years have been kind of tough, you know, where I've been at, you know, um, I think I talked about an album, but like, uh, my dad had cancer twice, you know, um, and then praise Jesus, he's totally fine. God is good. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that was kind of tough. Um, some other things, you know, financially and, and just, just life stuff happening, you know, the struggle and, and uh, on top of then, you know, COVID happening us, you know, we don't have our, we don't own our family restaurant anymore, you know, after years of investing into that to see it. And that way is unfortunate. A lot of that kind of stuff. Um, it really put me in a place where I was wrestling with a lot of doubts, you know, like in, in terms of like, okay, God, you know, I, I really don't like to complain because life could be way more worse, mm. but it feels like it's never been easy. And it's just been like a grind and a struggle, like from when I was a kid to, you know, I'm just turned 28, you know what I mean? Like, is this, is it ever gonna, when do you come up for breath? You know what I mean? Uh, you know, like, like from salt and rice and ketchup sandwiches as a kid to you know what I mean you know what it's like and and I'm still you know right on that level sometimes you know to this day it's like you know on top of everything else it's like god what's the deal like if you're really out there what's up then you know like what's good like like I feel like I'm investing and I'm not perfect but but I feel like my family and me and you know so much people have passed away in this time you know and 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 what's up and trying to wrestle with that and you know struggling with the mental health aspect of like depression and anxiety and that burning feeling of you don't know how you can pay rent or or whatever it is you know what I mean and it's like God having to or having you know having to meet God right there like like you don't have another option you don't have the luxury to break down you feel like you cannot talk about this because the people that are depending on you that you got to work to support you cannot show that weakness, you know what I mean? And, and you internalize all that for years and you start to have like real mental health struggles. And I think, I think that's something that, you know, is not just in my community, but just all throughout the nation and probably the world. Like, you know, you feel like you, you cannot talk about these things. You feel like isolated and you're alone with your doubts. You're alone on your mental health journey. So you internalize everything until you blow up, whatever that might be. Some of my friends would be suicide or, or they're in jail now, you know, or, or, you know, drinking or drug abuse or sex or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Um, and for me, this was me trying to verbalize, you know, some of those things um, and not I didn't want to do it in like a way where it was like I am struggling with mental health and, you know, like, like and just saying it. I wanted to try show it. So what we tried to do and it's up to everyone else to decide if we succeeded but what we wanted to do was to create like a sonic mental emotional journey so every song could stand as singles but create the highs and the lows and the ups and the downs of you know an experience like when you're struggling with mental health when you go you know what i mean yeah but you know what's crazy thomas is that when you hearing the album it's it's uh, you feel all of that mm. that you're saying you know what i'm saying so i'm, I'm glad that right. you had the opportunity to be so transparent everything you just said Thank just you. now it's so crazy like like when i was listening to it i, did, I just felt 
all of that. You know what I'm saying? So Thank I'm so you. happy that you had the opportunity to be so transparent and pour everything that you were dealing with from your dad to even like, yeah. you know, just things going on through COVID. You were able to pour yeah. your heart into that because it read through. Like, I, I, I know Thank as a listener, it, you definitely hear that. Guys, listen, your That's girls really Eminem are hanging out with Streetlight Sounds artist Thomas Iannucci. We're talking all about his debut album, doubting thomas well his new album uh, doubting thomas now listen yes, yes, yes. we gotta talk about this um there are two topics that you bring up in mm-hmm. the album that most people don't mix together or think that mm. are the opposite and that's mm. faith and mental health mm. i think people yeah. don't like to mix those two together and it's sometimes really in the bad. church you hear that sometimes church people will hear that you're dealing with mental health and they'll brush it off to the side you know, I'm not saying that, like, you know, that yeah. God's not going to help us through, but they tend like, you know, shrug it off. And I love that your album exists because you're talking about those exact issues and being very Thank transparent you. about it. Why do you think some Christians undermine mental health and how do you think we can move that conversation forward? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I think um, a lot of that has to do with, you know, it's an issue. Of, it's a matter of what they feel is a lack of faith. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, you know, like, um, and I feel like, plus, you got to think about it like this. So, you know, us, we're young still. Yeah. Our generation is not yet running the established church. Mm-hmm. It's still the older generation. So if you take into consideration what they went through, you know, um, everything from like civil rights to, to just, you know, the Vietnam War and all this kind of stuff, like you had to be strong and get through a lot of things. And they didn't have even the understanding of a lot of, of, a lot of this kind of stuff in the way that I think we're starting to a little bit. Um, but having to feel like, I mean, honestly, it, a lot of times if you, if you bring it up, like, oh, you know, I'm depressed or something like that, they look at you funny, like. Right, yeah. Yeah, hey, go pray, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, right, like, like, right. You know, <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> oh, okay, I didn't think of praying. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Like, you know, like, they, yeah, pray it away. That's a great way to put it. They think of it as like a, a weakness or, or a lack of faith or, but it's not you know it's it's mental health is a journey yeah in the same way that faith is a journey you're never going to get to a point where like i have perfected faith i have now arrived and it's all going to be good from here and in the same way you know maybe i can't speak for everybody but for a lot of us mental health is a a struggle it's a journey i'd say for most of us probably and so they go hand in hand you cannot have mental health like truly mental you know a healthy mental wellness without faith but you can't really have faith unless you're in a mentally healthy place like long term Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like like if you're always you know ups and downs and 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 you can't talk about it and it's getting toxic inside you i just don't see how you could have like a really good faith life Mm -hmm. you know what i mean i i feel like they really go hand in hand and i think it, it 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 boils down to even in church, a lot of times, like, you know, that whole, it goes back to like, hey, how are you doing? Like, oh, I'm good, brother. I'm good. Like, I'm good. You know, that that kind of facade, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think there's a lot of that. I think there's a fear of opening up to other people and kind of getting freaked out when people open up to you about that kind of stuff. Like, whoa, 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 chill, you know. Yeah. But I, I think it has a lot to do with like this thing of uh, if you're having doubts, you're having mental health struggles depression anxiety you know whatever that might be then it's because your faith is off somehow yeah. um and on um, you know that's unfortunate i mean because really god is big enough to handle our doubts you know like you think about the example of like you know jacob wrestling with god you know what i mean like he literally physically wrestled with him but we you know, a God that can't handle our doubts and our fears, that's the, the quote goes, right, is, is not a God that's worth worshiping. You know, he's a big boy. He can handle these things. You can take it to him. He's our dad. Like, bad dad, what's up? I don't understand. I'm scared. I, I, I don't like what you're doing. Please help me to understand, you know, and not in an arrogant way, but in a sincere, almost desperate kind of way, right? And he's going to meet you there. And I think that um, the church, and, and not all churches, of course, uh, but a lot of times they miss out on a very raw, beautiful part of our faith, of our Christianity, by kind of cutting off that mental health aspect, because I, I really think they go hand in hand. Yeah, and I, I'm even glad that you even mentioned that, because a lot of times I do think that, you know, the church, some churches, I will say that, some believers mm. even, they mm. do 
brush it away. They do tend to like, you know, just sprinkle yeah. a little bit of more Jesus on there. Maybe you're not praying enough. Yeah. Maybe you're not, you got to get your life right. Different things like that. Yeah. But the fact that you decided to marry these two together and to really show how similar they are in instances and how different they are, but how we all can get through depression mm -hmm. together through faith is absolutely a, tr a truly great thing that you have done even in this project. Thank but one song I want to talk in particular is... Sure. The song Rage, mm -hmm. right? I, I want to talk about Rage because I, I saw the title of the song and I'm expecting to be super, super right. hard, real crazy. Yeah, I was yeah, ready yeah, to get yeah, lit, yeah, tied yeah. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, all of that's going to be like poured into this song Rage before it even comes across my playlist, but it's it's the complete opposite. You know, like it's Hold so on. soothing. I was at peace. It's calming. It's nice. You know, like we hear the Hawaii right. sounds come out there. Right, so, right, you know, right. just talk about the inspiration mm. behind sure. that song in particular. Sure. So that was on purpose. We wanted to kind of subvert expectations. I mean, we got Sunny from PODs, like, you know, a, a metal rap, rap rock kind of band. We have myself. I don't do a lot of upbeat music. You know, so we're like, okay, we know the obvious way that we could go with this, mm -hmm. but we want to like subvert expectations. And um, that song Rage was written by um, a few of my brothers out um, on Oahu and the Big Island. They did most of the writing. We just kind of gave it a little bit of tweaks here and there. Mm -hmm. um, but it, <sighs> I was trying to think of a way to put this. So, so in Hawaii, right? Um, and I don't know, it's hard for me to tell sometimes I don't get out to the mainland too often what stuff is also on the mainland and what's just in Hawaii. But I know in Hawaii, when we say rage, a lot of times we mean like to party. Mm -hmm. So, so you say like, Oh, we'll go raise, right. You know, we'll party rage on, you know what I mean? We'll party on or, you know, like a, a rager is a party. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, that this fat rager the other night. It was pretty crazy. You know, the stuff like that, you know, it's like a nuts party or whatever. Um, and so, we wanted to kind of flip something like that. And on top of the fact that with everything going crazy right now and, and as nuts as it's all been, um, this idea that we're gonna rage on, we're gonna push on, we're gonna fight through something, you know, and party on, it is a choice. You know what I mean? Like, like in this sort of thing, like, you know, your attitude, your perception, the way that you, <clears throat> excuse me, the way that you kind of perceive and you push through life, a lot of times it is a choice. And so we're going to choose to rage on. We're going to choose to celebrate in spite of all the bad things. And let's, you know, like give something. And it's kind of a heavy album, you know. Uh, let's let's give them something to kind of, you know, pick them up a little bit and, and, and pick listeners up, you know. So we wanted something like that. We like the play on words of the fact that it's a Hawaii reference. And also it's a subverting of expectations of rage and that kind of thing. So yeah, that was, that was my favorite track on the album for sure. Honestly, for me too, cause I'm not gonna lie, because you already had different songs on there that I was super mm -hmm. like, you know, like lit off of, and like just thank that you, energy. And when Rage mm -hmm. came, I was like, okay, let me prepare myself. <laughs> but when I'm kind of like, I feel like I need a coconut. Need exactly, <laughs> just relax, you know. It's so I definitely, I, I love that you guys did that, and I, it's one thank of my you. favorite songs off of the project. I, I gotta thank say that you to so you. Much. So Thomas, now that uh, the album came out, I feel like at a great time, mm -hmm. you know, because 2020 was just hard for a lot of us, oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And oh, yeah. after everything that happened this year in the world as a whole, even in, you know, people's personal lives, you know, for those mm -hmm. who are still dealing with their own form of doubt for whatever mm -hmm. that may be, what advice would you give to them after going through this experience of doubt yourself? Sure. So talk about it. That's the big thing. Like, like, you know, one thing you got to think about is that spiritual warfare is real, you know, and just like in military tactics, right? The same thing is that the enemy wants to divide and conquer, mm -hmm. you know, so to, you know, together we're strong, divided we're weak. Huh? So in the same way, where the doubts come in, where the mental health struggle comes in is that we isolate, we self-isolate, we internalize, we don't talk about it. Yeah. We don't, you know, I might be going through the same thing that you guys are, right? But if I never bring it up, we're never going to connect. We're never going to find healing in that way. And sometimes it's as simple as like, you know what? I just feel like giving up. I just feel like I can't do it anymore. Saying it out loud to someone else. A lot of times everyone else feels the same way. And so whoever you tell it is going to be like, bah, me too. And they're like, what? You too? I thought it was just me. You know, and then, you know, it kind of like, oh, oh my God, it's not just me. Ah, ah, you know, I that tightening of the chest, I can, I can breathe a little bit more, I can relax a little bit more, the tension on the shoulder, feeling like you're, you're carrying the weight of the world on your back, like, 
you know, just a little bit. And the more we talk about it, the more we break that silence, you know, the more that we realize we're all into this, you know, like, like, I feel like it, it, it'd be a lot more healing for all of us. You know, when you let a wound fester and you don't clean it out, that's how you get infected. And it's the same thing with the heart. You don't clean it. You don't find that release. You don't get it off your chest. Um, our mind is an echo chamber I found in my, in my experience, you know? And so if you're just alone with your thoughts, it, it just gets louder and louder and louder and louder. And, you know, but if you say it out loud, a lot of times it loses its power. You know what I mean? And if you say it to someone else, not just alone in your car, but to somebody else, you have a, a conversation about it and they're going through it too. And you got your own struggles, but, but Hey, you're not alone. Now it's two people in this together. You talk to a third person and now it's three people going through and so on and so forth. We can form a network, you know, a community. Like I know a lot of people get freaked out about like, um, you know, like psychiatrists and that kind. Okay. That's fine. If that's not your cup of tea, you know, like you'd be surprised how, how healing regular, healthy conversations about these kind of things and not like, you know, drinking at the bar, like, ah, my life sucks, you know, like, but like real meaningful dialogue, you know, like heart to heart kind of stuff. It, it can change your life. You know what I mean? And that was my heart behind this album for me and uh, my producers, the bruise was like, let's just, let's just start that conversation. You know, let's just, let me just put myself out there and, and maybe that'll inspire a couple other people to talk about their issues with other people and start a ripple effect. You know what I mean? And, and I think that if everybody, yeah, I think if every, you know, the whole world had like a once a week kind of conversation like that, like right. low commitment, we would see a huge change in mental health across the world, you know? Yeah, yeah I, 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 I totally even agree with you. But but Thomas, you have been such a breath of fresh air to have yes. on this show. Thank I feel you, like a little you. piece of, you know, the tranquility in Hawaii has made its way all the way yes. to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, just, just help mellow everything out in the midst of everything that's been happening in 2020. But yeah. thank you so much for hanging out with us on this week's show of Eminem. Before you go, give everyone your social media so that they can stay connected with you. Sure. They can follow me on Instagram at Thomas Iannucci. That's a I-A-N-N-U-C-C-I. -C -C it's, it's a very Italian last name. Um, and uh, you can do the same on Twitter, but there's an underscore at the end of Thomas Iannucci because there's some other Thomas Iannucci who won't give me his username. So I'm at Thomas Iannucci underscore on Twitter. Thomas Iannucci on all uh, streaming platforms as well and on Facebook and stuff. So you can go ahead and add me there. Yeah. Listen, guys, make sure you guys are following Thomas on all social media. And listen, guys, <laughs> yes, make sure you guys go get this new mm -hmm. album. It's out right now. It's called Doubting yes. Thomas, and it's on all music platforms. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. Thomas, bro, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. I know it's been a long time. I'm, gra I'm glad that we were able to finally link up and have you on I the know. show. And huge congratulations to you, the career. I mean, we hopefully look forward to even meeting you in person sometime yes. in 2021. Yes. Yes. But just know that yeah, you always have sure. our support here, okay, bro? We'll talk to you soon, okay? Mahalo, guys. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank of course. Most definitely, my family. So listen to everybody. Listen, everybody that's tuned in, make sure you keep it where you got it because we got some more Thomas Iannucci coming up right here, right now. That's right. Here is back again from Thomas Iannucci's new album, Doubting Thomas. Listen, turn this one all the way up and we'll be right back. You're listening to You Already Know. It's Eminem Live Radio.